I want to talk to you today about places in heaven. Places in heaven. Now, there's a scripture that we're familiar with in Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 3. And it says, who God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Everybody know that scripture? It says, say it with me. God has blessed us. God has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, does anybody know where heavenly places is? Do you know what you just said? <laughs> I'm just asking. Do you know what you just said? He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Well, so I guess if we go back to our religious thinking, you know, heaven is a place where it's sort of fuzzy and cloud-like and... Yeah. There's spirits sort of floating around, and uh, it's a bright place. There's clouds, and, um, you know, the glory of God's there. Maybe there's angels there singing. I mean, it depends on what church you were raised in as to how you think heaven is, right? Yes. Um, maybe you, you would see the saints there, you know. You might see Mary, the mother of Jesus. You might see St. Paul. You might see St. Peter. Um but whatever it is, I think um, from kind of what I see and what I've experienced with people is it's heaven is sort of this nebulous place out there somewhere we don't really know what it is. It's sort of like fantasy land, you know. It's something that is in our imagination. Maybe it's not real. But. Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, 3, that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's where our spiritual blessings are. Where? In heavenly places. So where are our physical, if there's spiritual blessings, there must be physical blessings also, right? And so where are they? They, are, they manifest in the physical realm, right? If you're going to have a physical blessing, somebody hands you a check for a thousand dollars, you can handle that check. Or if somebody gives you some a new car, or somebody gives you something like that, that is in the physical realm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And yet he says here, God's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, what does it mean to be blessed? We hear people saying that a lot today. You know. Oh, I'm so blessed. What a blessing. I'm so blessed. Even people that aren't Christians are blessed, right? So what does it mean? That word is from where we get our, you're going to laugh at this. We get our root word, eulogize. A eulogy. That kind of throws a different twist on it, doesn't it? Eulogize. It means to decree favor or consecration. So when you have a eulogy at a funeral, somebody is talking well about the deceased. You don't want somebody doing the eulogy at a funeral that's going to tell all the rotten things they did, because that's, that's not a eulogy. A eulogy is to talk about what how they were we favored them or something. So if God has <laughs> favored and blessed us with spiritual blessing spiritual favors in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus don't you think we ought to find out where that is and try to get some of it I'm not going with I'm not going where you think I'm going with this so okay just don't get settled in your head all right so Paul says that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and I'm gonna let me cover this real quickly Ephesians 1 verse 3 Reading from the Greek, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, the heavens has one word, and I, I listen to it in the Greek, and you don't want me trying to speak the Greek, but if I want to speak it in a southern Arkansas Greek, this word is aparanios. It's close, okay? But it has E-P-I in front of O-U-R-A-N-I-O-S. And the word 
Uranios, that's probably Spanish accent with maybe a little bit of Arkansas slang. So you, if you want to know how to pronounce it in Greek, go look it up and punch the little button and listen to it, okay? But epi is in front of it. So we've got the heavens and then we've got heavenly places. Everybody say heaven. And then we have heavenly places. So if it's if it's heavenly places, that indicates to me there's more than one place. I'm not saying more than one heaven. I'm saying more than one place, all right? So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I have seen in the realm of the spirit in those other places in the heavenlies in a moment. But I want you to get the scriptures first because I don't, you can hear people sharing prophecies. You can hear them sharing visions, dreams, and going to heaven. But unless it lines up with the Bible, just move on. Okay? So, Mark, uh, Matthew 24 and 30. I want to take this just this word heaven. Okay? And this is Jesus speaking. And he's talking about the end times. He says, verse 2430, then the sign of the Son of Man will, okay, I'm, I'm reading it again. This is mine from the Greek. It says, the sign of the Son of Man will appear, come to shine bright and resplendent in the sky. Now, that word is in many translations says in the heavens extending in the heavens so what that when you read that word it doesn't have epi in front of it so the son of man will appear in glory in the sky everybody point up sky everybody seen pictures of the earth and the atmosphere about the earth where did jesus ascend when he ascended before the disciples, before the day of Pentecost, he said, go tarry in Jerusalem. Where did he ascend to? It said he ascended into the sky, right? Everybody say sky. That's where the air is that surrounds the earth. There's air we can breathe here. You get far out in space, you can't breathe anymore if you have a physical body. So he talks about the sky. And then in Matthew 24 and 27, I'm backing up a little bit to take the same word. Jesus said, for just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes. Now, interesting. Flashes, that is the same Greek word as the Son of Man will appear. This is <laughs> the sun, just as the lightning flashes, even from the east, even to the west, so will the coming presence or arrival of the son of man be so again he's talking about where's lightning nobody knows where lightning is it's in the sky right <laughs> yeah. i mean we see a lot of that here in oklahoma the lightning flashes have you ever seen it flash not just straight to the ground but across the clouds you know and it lightens the sky it says he says just as the lightning in the brightness so bright that you can hard, that you can't even hardly look at it. That's why Moses had to cover his face. The brightness, it was so great that they couldn't look upon him. So it says that the sign of the Son of Man will be great brightness as he appears. That's a day of glory, isn't it? But it's talking about the immediate surrounding atmosphere in the earth where he will appear. Now, Paul refers to the prince of the power of the air. Air. Where is the air? Around the earth. So, when we're talking about heavens, they're actually talking about two different heavens. The heaven and then beyond, on out into the heavens that extends on out into the universe, into the infinity of God. Okay? Now, this word particularly in Ephesians 1 and 3, and let's go to Ephesians 1 20, where it says, God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly, everybody say it, places. 
Okay, he's blessed us with spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And it says, God raised Jesus and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. And then in Ephesians 2, 6, he further carries this on. Same guy, Paul, the apostle, says, and he has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, you think he ought to be through with heavenly places, but he's not. Okay? Ephesians 3.10 says, So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God, might now be known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute. What? His wisdom is manifest. His plan and his purpose is manifest so that through the church, who's the church? Yeah. We are, so that through us, the wisdom of God will be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. Okay, so in my mind, I've pictured the uh, prince of the power, the air, the spiritual wickedness, you know, around the earth. I mean, this is what I'm picturing <clears throat> when I'm thinking about this, and yet, Paul consistently uses heavenly places to go beyond the air around the earth. Mm -hmm. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. He consistently uses that same word. Might make be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. So who is he making his wisdom known to? Spiritual beings in the heavenly places what spiritual beings are in the heavenly places well you know if you have loved ones who have passed that knew the lord well they're in heavenly places amen <laughs> if there are angels serving god then they come and go from heavenly places right mm -hmm. that didn't get a big amen there but there everybody agree there's angels in heaven yes yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, we see that scripturally. There are angels in heaven. All right. So there are angels in heaven. But what else exists there that we are unaware of? Is heaven just a place where we float around on clouds? And no, it says, it says right here that through the church, us, God's wisdom will be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. That includes... The rulers and authorities, if you want to go on the hierarchy of the angelic rulers, there are angelic rulers. There are good ones, and then there are those that rebel. There are ones that serve God. They're the ones that have rebelled against God. And it says in heavenly places, he is making known his wisdom through who? Jesus? Well, no, it says through the church. Yeah. How are we doing so far? Hmm. how are you doing so far making known god's wisdom to the rulers the the uh, authorities the angels the archangels the wisdom of god just asking i told you we're not going where you think we're going all right. And then in Ephesians 6, 12, we're still in the book of Ephesians. It's still the Apostle Paul. He says, For we not, do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> well, that kind of shook up my my vision, my imagination, because I thought they were around the atmosphere and the earth. Well, they are. But it made me wonder, and so I read the book of Job again. Everybody goes, oh, boy, I don't want to read that. No, I read the book of Job. 
and it starts out with a fascinating thing. The angels of God came before to present themselves before God. And when they presented themselves before God, he said, what are you doing? Where have you been? And they started reporting. They'd been going to and fro throughout the earth. And it says that Satan appeared. How dare he? Really? He would appear before God? Well, in that particular instance, it says he appeared before God. And he indicated, and there was other times that a spirit volunteered to be a lying spirit. So what, what are we talking about here? Is it possible, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a documentary here, <laughs> is it possible there are other beings in heavenly places besides just our narrow view of angels with wings and people that have passed? Yeah. Is it possible? I'm just asking. It says, if we're wrestling against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places, then the church positionally is seated at the right hand of the Father with Jesus. And if you've listened to the TV programs we've done, this is what the whole point is. Patsy and I were talking about is praying from that position not from the position down here on earth going, oh, God, please help me. Please send somebody to help me, please. We're, we're, we're begging from a position of being a victim instead of a victor. Mm -hmm. But our position of, as the church should be as seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus to exercise through our mouth and the rhema of God, the will, plan, and purpose of God in the earth. And so as we are praying, we are to pray from that position. Okay. When Christ was raised from the dead, where, did he, where was he seated? The right hand of the Father in heavenly places. What does it say that... In Ephesians 2, 6, and raised us up with him and seated us in heavenly places. We are there with him, and therefore we are the, the right hand of God. We are the right arm of God to manifest his wisdom to everybody that is watching. We get stuck down here on the earth. Well, you know, the left and that bunch. They're going to be watching the wisdom of God manifest through us. Well, no no doubt if we are in prayer, praying from the position in heavenly places, they are going to see the wisdom of God manifest. But it's not just the left and the evil and the wicked that it says need to see the wisdom of God. It says The, those that are in the heavenly places, rulers and authority there to see the wisdom of God. All right. So Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows of beings in. Anybody know what that says? Heaven. Beings in. Earth and beings under the earth, talking about three different realms, beings in heaven, beings in earth, and beings under the earth. Let's make a separation here between the physical and the spiritual realm. Now, everything in the physical comes from the spiritual realm. Everything you see here comes from the spiritual realm. So heaven is a real place. It is not a just a kind of a foggy place where people float on clouds. Heaven is a real place that has real activities, real beings, spiritual beings, whether it is people that have passed and gone on before, whether it's angelic, whether there are other things that we don't even really know about and the reason it's not given to us is because too many people will follow after and try to get into the weirdness of what we don't know mm 
I said the weirdness of that what we don't know. If you push into spiritual weirdness, I promise you there will be spirits who will oblige you. They want to talk to you. What do you think happened in Genesis chapter 6 when it says that the angels of God took unto themselves wives of all they chose? How did they do that? Well, you know, up until that point, you see the celestial beings, and I'm going to say that because I want you to get off of the thing that it's only angels, the celestial beings that appeared to humans before Genesis 6. Just they were here. The watchers, the cherubim that kept that uh, that kept uh, Adam and Eve from eating of the tree of life. There were spiritual beings here on earth that were seen, and it was normal to these people. So when these angels rebelled and approached these women, it doesn't say whether they were agreeable or not. But given the the um, the church fathers and historians that are listed. It appears that they were because it said then these spiritual beings, these celestial beings, these angels, sons of God, which is used of the angelic host, it says that they taught their wives astrology, the signs of the times, witchcraft, uh, all kinds of the, what we call the occult. These angels taught the humans that. So through this discussion and this thing that happened in Genesis 6 when God wiped everything out. There were only eight people left on the earth that hadn't been contaminated by angelic DNA. I'll put it that way. Only eight people left on the earth. Millions here, eight people left on the earth. It all got wiped out. And after that happened, then we see that the teachings that came about about forbidding astrology, forbidding all these things. And I want, I want to make a difference here between astrology and astronomy. <laughs> yes. Because my husband's an amateur astronomer. And when I tell people that, the look on their face... <laughs> They're horrified. How could the husband of Charles Capps be an astrologist? This is what they do. There's a difference between astrology and astronomy. Astronomy, and Heather's sitting here, you know, she looks at the stars, got a telescope, and you can see, you know, the craters on the moon. You can see the rings of Saturn. You can see in the moons of Jupiter. It's just really a cool thing to do. That in no way read your chart and tells you who you're going to marry. <laughs> now, they are associated, okay? They are associated in that astrology uses the stars and it uses the location of the planets to, say, to predict the influence on humans, okay? And everybody knows that there is some influence there. But wisely... God told us to stay out of that stuff. Don't practice it. Don't commune with celestial beings unless they come to represent God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are not to commune with celestial beings, all right? Have I made myself clear on that part? There's so many places I could go with that, and I'm trusting God to keep me on track today. So I want to talk to you about some places in heaven that I have seen, and I have never shared I don't know that I've shared any of these before, but the Spirit of God prompted me this morning to talk about some of these things. So the first one, I'm going to break you in easy, okay? Uh, around 1972, 73, I was, uh, Beverly and I, uh, had a a retail store in England, Arkansas, a ladies ready to wear uh, dress shop, you would call it back then. People don't wear dresses much now, but it was a clothing store. And I was in the back and my office back there, and I've been working on uh, accounting and I wasn't feeling well. And so I, just, I put my head on the desk. And when I did, I either went to sleep. I don't, I really don't know what it was. 
But I had a vision, whether it was in a sleeping vision, like a dream or what. I actually went to heaven. And it was not, you know, I can't speak for everybody else's experience, okay? But I'm just saying with me, things are just sort of normal, down to earth. I'm a farmer's daughter, and I don't really get into the stuff much. You know, I don't think I do it all, actually. But anyway, I went to heaven, and it was absolutely astounding what I saw. I wasn't floating around. I feel pretty much, felt pretty much like I feel here, except I was in the most beautiful place that I've ever seen. And, of course, God's going to probably show me something different than maybe he would show somebody else. But the colors in that place were so vibrant. And I was outside, <clears throat> of course. I was outside. And the grass was a green that was just, it, it's just indescribable. The green here, we see beautiful lawns, you know, that are, but it just doesn't compare to what, I, and I can't describe why. It's like it's alive. The colors are alive, you know. Um, and so I was walking through this place, and it was beautiful. It was like a park-like setting trees, fruit trees. There was a crystal, beautiful, clear river. There, were, I saw people there, but of course, I wasn't interested in the people. I was interested in the countryside. <laughs> so I was wondering, and I came up to this tree. I just was fascinated with this tree because its leaves were sort of shimmering and I walked over, I could see fruit. And so I took the fruit and it would be comparable to maybe what you would say a really ripe peach, you know, and the peaches you get in the grocery store, you know, picked when they're green and whatever. I mean, this, this fruit was ready to be eaten and I picked one off and it was just, it was soft. And I just took a big bite of it and it, the juice was just, it was the most delicious thing, but it the juice, you know how if you bite a peach that's really um, ripe and the juice kind of starts running down your chin, you know, and kind of drip on you, you know, <laughs> you've had that experience probably. And so I did and I could feel it, but as soon as I finished it, it was gone. It wasn't sticky. It was gone. It didn't, there was no after effect, should I say. It was just delicious. And so I, I'm just fascinated with it. And I turned to look at this river and I walked over to the river and I looked, I looked down to see how deep it was because I was going to walk across. As I've done a lot of times when hiking and you have a flowing cold stream and you walk across. So, and, um, and so I was going to step and walk across this river, but I couldn't really see the bottom and so this person, and I'm going to say this person, I should say being, because I, I don't think it was, I don't know. It, I've seen things there I don't have words for. So I'm just going to say a person or a being walked up to me and said, do you want to cross? And I said, yeah, but it looks deep. He said, go ahead and try it. And so I stepped off and I started going deeper and deeper. And I turned around and, and looked, go ahead. and I walked. And as I walked, I went under the water. And I wasn't breathing underwater because there was no need to do it. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. I was just under the water. And I could see everything clear, crystal clear. And I went to the other side, and the thing that I noticed both in the water and out of the water was when I, I didn't feel wet. Mm. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't feel wet. There was no, uh, no, uh, you know, as much as I like to swim and get in the water, you get out, you're wet, right? Your hair's dripping, you're wet. But there's none of the negative that that we might not even consider negative. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so that was a real place. Heaven is a real place. It's not a fictional made up. I mean, it's real. It's just that, you know, most people haven't been there. And so that was that was a, a place that was not in the air about the earth. This is a real place that I went to. And then there have been places that I have been. This is a place 
you know, on earth, you can go to Jerusalem, you can go to Moscow, you can go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you can go to Los Angeles, California, and it all looks different, doesn't it? It's the same way with heaven. There's not just one floaty place. There's lots of places in the heavenlies. Lots of different places. And it depends on what the activity is and what's going on. So I'm going to conclude here pretty quick because I know there's only so much of this that you can kind of absorb at one swap. But I will tell you, that there are other places in heaven, and this comes to rulers and authorities and places in the heavens. How many of you have ever heard any teaching on the courts of heaven? The courts of heaven. So this word that we're talking about with heavenly places, that word means the abode of God the abode of angels, and where the heavenly temple or sanctuary is. There is a temple in heaven, and the temple that was built in Jerusalem was given from that spiritual realm and manifested here on the earth. The design was given by God. So many cubits, this, that, the other. Are you familiar with that? The reason is because it is a replica of the temple that is in heaven, the sanctuary of God, the abode of God. It is a replica. Actually, the earth is a replica of heaven. It's just that it's been corrupted. So is there a Tulsa, Oklahoma in heaven? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't having been given that information. But it is broader than what we have ever expected and what have we have ever thought. So in about 2005, I was in Arizona at a meeting, and we had gathered outside this, I don't know where we were, but we were in a parking lot. And we're standing in this parking lot, and we had gathered in a circle to pray. And so I don't remember even what the subject of prayer was, but as I began to pray, I suddenly was somewhere else, and I was suddenly somewhere else, and in that somewhere else, I was standing before a, I would say, what I would consider to be a courthouse, something having to do with the law or library. Um, there were great, huge pillars, like you would see you know, you, you hear the wonders of the world and the, the temple of Diana and all this stuff with these pillars, the libraries, the this, the that. And so it was like a library, a court, but anyway, it was a place where uh, things were stored that had been written or um, like a library, I guess. So I'm standing there and I'm going, wow, what is this? And this uh, young man, and I say young man because he looked, you know, maybe 30, 35. He came out, but he was wearing a white robe. I don't, you know, people, I don't know what to say about this celestial being. How does that work? Because it was not an angel is what I would expect or anybody would find him necessarily and say an angel was. Looked more like a regular person, but. There was something that I knew that was very different. And he walked over and he had a, how many of you seen maps that are rolled up and you un unroll them and lay them out on the table? You know, my dad used to have a real estate development and they would um, roll out blueprints and the plats and that sort of thing. So I rolled it out and he showed me a map of the United States and he showed me and I looked and I went, wow, because it wasn't something I expected to see. I don't feel free to really share exactly what I saw, but it was about the future. And I looked at it and I, I looked up and I said, can this be changed? And the reason I asked that is things can be changed. There are things that can be changed through prayer. 
We're seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Can this be changed through prayer? And he said, no, and he rolled it up. And he said, you just needed to know this. And I was back in the parking lot in Arizona. Now, what did that mean? I've been waiting quite a while since 2005 to know exactly what that, that meant. But for some reason, that was something that needed to be imparted to me. Now, this makes it sound like, I don't want to make it sound like I go to heaven, you know, I pray and I go to heaven every time. I do not. Absolutely not. I, I'm concerned about when I hear people do that sort of thing. This is over a period of, what, 40 or 50 years? And then I'm going to share one last thing because I believe this is very relevant to our position of being seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places. It is a position. You, you, All of you know you're sitting here in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma in a chair yeah. and on earth, right? Okay. You're, you're not in that place, heaven, right now, physically. You're here, right? So when Paul talks about this, he's talking about positionally, your position. And I want to liken it this way. If, <laughs> because we can talk a lot of things about a lot of things today, but I want to talk about the Supreme Court of the United States. If you are appointed to be a judge of the Supreme Court of the United States of America, and you receive that appointment, you have been appointed there, then you are in that position from that point forward, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go back every day and say, okay, appoint me again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you're out playing golf, <laughs> if, if you're at a restaurant eating, if you're playing with your grandkids, you are still in that position of being a Supreme Court justice. Is that right? Well, this is our appointment. The Supreme Court justices do not live in the Supreme Court. Right. That's good. Wow. <clears throat> they go there, but they don't live there. But that doesn't change their position. And so even though you are here on earth, everybody here agrees they're here on earth, even though you are here on earth, your position is still what it is in the heavenly places, which is you are there to find the counsel of God and pray and speak the counsel of God and live out the wisdom of God, both in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. You are a dual citizen. Everybody say, I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of earth. It's dual citizenship. Okay? So your position in heavenly places is the same. Once you confess Jesus as your Lord, that is it. You have been raised with him, seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it is through you, look at Ephesians 3.10, so that through the church, the wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. It is not to angels that the world to come has been subjected. It will not be ruled by angels. It will be ruled by who? Us. Us. We will rule. We better get started now. Yes. You know, we look at the short time frame here and say, oh, I'm just waiting to be raptured. Well, yeah, hallelujah. But guess what? You're going to have a seven-year vacation. Then you're really going to be busy. Are you getting this today? Yes. Heavenly places. All right. So 
This last thing I want to mention to you happened Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and finish this. I'm not going to go into a lot of explanation here. Another place that I went to, I don't remember exactly the year, but it would have been between 1973 and 2005. And I was praying and asking God some questions about things, and suddenly I was in a place, and this place was a plain, and it was flat, you would maybe call it a desert if you wanted to, but there were no there was nothing. There were no mountains, there was no scenery. It was a flat place as far as the eye could see. And the weird thing about it was you could see so far because there was no curvature. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say curves here? When I've been in an airplane and flying and I'm up there, I can, as I'm flying along, I can see the curvature of the earth. I can see the curvature. But this place where I was, I'd never been in a place like this. It was immense and it was flat and it was so far that I could see. It seemed like forever. It was not a scary place. It was just a place. It was a heavenly place. And it was a place of expectation because I could see from far, far away a horse coming and running toward me with something for me, an answer. And in the in a similar way, this... In a very similar way, this horseman rode up to me, and I'm just standing there, and he reached down and he handed me like a scroll, and I took it, and he went on, and I was standing there holding it. And I believe that this is something for the future. Now, whether it's the future before the rapture, the future after the rapture, but he handed something to me. There, you can receive things from heavenly places, and you don't know what they are. And where people get in trouble is they try to put an interpretation on what happened, and they get off into the weirdness of what we don't know. But that was a place, and I'm talking about places in heaven. And then I want to share with you the last one. And that is, I was in prayer. Some things were coming up. This was in about the year. It was between, I was going to look it up, but it was maybe 2018. And I was in prayer, and the Spirit of God led me to begin praying for the states of the United States. And as I was praying in tongues and praying for the states of the United States, I began to get the interpretation or move prophetically in prophesying to each state. Now, I didn't prophesy to all 50 states, but there were multiple states that the Lord gave me a word for that I prophesied to. And it was one of the heaviest anointings I've ever been on under <laughs> And it just kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. And again, this was in prayer. This was in prayer. And pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. It was very specific about each state, certain things about each state being judged and about what was going to happen, what was going to come forth, and what God was changing at that moment. And so when I got through with that part of it, suddenly I heard a voice and I was in another place. Up until that time, I was under the anointing and was under the prophetic anointing, and then I was in another place, and I was called before council. And this council existed in something, I guess, if I was going to compare it to anything here on earth, I would say a federal grand jury. It's not actually a the court thing, but the, the grand jury is hearing testimony to decide whether to um, actually, you know, c call someone to trial. So it was a hearing, and it was a council thing, and I was asked 
to testify. And my testimony was about the founding of the United States of America and what would happen, what was going to be done in the United States of America. And the decision was being made before the council. And of course, in my mind, I had still had my mind. I was not a spiritual, I was, didn't become an angel and become a spiritual being. In my mind, I was going, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Why was I called? What? My mind was going, I, sh I, I shouldn't be here. Somebody knows more than I do. Somebody knows more than I do. I mean, but this was all going on and but I was still under that prophetic anointing, and I began to testify of the intentions of the covenants that were made in this country with the United States of America, the covenants that these men and women made with the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that covenants cannot be annulled. And I was speaking this forth under the anointing of the Spirit of God. And all the time, my mind was arguing with me, just like it does here sometimes. You've heard me say, I didn't want to speak on this. <laughs> my mind was arguing with me, and yet my mouth was pouring forth things that I didn't even know that I knew. My mouth was pouring, pouring it forth. And then, bang, when I was finished with my testimony, I was back. And I sat down quickly, because I'm telling you, that was not something that you don't do these things. You don't decide you're going to go take a visit to heaven. You don't decide you're going to go do stuff like this. You receive a summons or invitation or you don't go. Because people who push into the realm of the spirit, not knowing what they're doing, they get into the wrong thing the wrong thing. You only go places like that in the safety of God. And I haven't shared this over the years because of various reasons. One of them is I've heard way too much of people jumping up and telling stuff just to make a big splash and get a big YouTube video or, or put a book out to, you know, to get attention. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is you, the church, there are heavenly places that you, the church, you, the church, must visit positionally and exercise your authority to see to it that God's wisdom is shown to every celestial being, every ruler and authority in heaven, on earth, every ruler and authority that is on God's side and every ruler and authority that is on the enemy's side. It is through us, the church, that we are to make these things known. And you can sit there and the folks that are watching on YouTube, you can say, well, that's a net caps. That's because no, 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 you've missed the point. The point here is I've been to some of these places because God took me there kind of as a, a forerunner. But this is a place where you, every one of you, needs to awaken in the morning and know what your position is. Just like the justices of the Supreme Court wake up every morning, and I bet you they know they're a Supreme Court justice. Whether they're feeding their baby or whether they're playing golf or whether they're washing dishes, no matter what they're doing, they know they are a Supreme Court justice. And in the same manner, you need to know you are raised and seated positionally at the right hand of God to make decisions and to speak forth the truth of God's word so that all celestial beings, every heaven and earth and everywhere will know the manifest wisdom of God through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the raising him from the dead, and the reconciliation of all things through his death, burial, and resurrection. And everybody that agreed said, Amen.